You know, sometimes I find myself looking back at the golden days of making music in my bedroom. And I have to ask myself, do I miss it? Nope. Hello. My name is Hugo Bryce. I'm an indie recording artist. I'm a composer and musical director for film and TV. And I'm one of the founders of the sync company, Thunder Drum. I make a living and a fairly good living from being a musician. I made this channel to share my music, my creative processes and philosophy, and also to share the knowledge that has allowed me to build a self-sustaining business from making music. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. Last year, I finished building my first studio. I've spent the last 16 years making music at home, in my bedroom, in my living room, in a spare room, wherever I could find space. I've always loved the immediacy of a home studio, being able to pick up a guitar or set up a microphone and just start recording. But life moves on. I met my partner about three years ago and we've recently bought our first flat together, a little one bed place about an hour outside of London. So I started looking for somewhere to build a studio. Living outside of London makes it a little bit harder to find somewhere where you can build one. However, one of the silver linings of lockdown was that a scenery building company with a warehouse about five minutes from my flat relaunched as a creative co-work, offering workspace on a square by square meter basis to creatives in the local area. I arranged to rent a rectangle of space about four meters by nine meters with a free pass to build whatever I wanted within that space. It had the benefit of a huge window with an amazing view to trees and the sky. The first step was to insulate the existing ceiling structure. I used NAUF's RS60 rock wall panels to fill the cavity to a depth of around 200 to 300 millimeters. Next was a secondary layer of high absorption 9 millimeter closed cell foam mounted on a 9 millimeter OSB board. This high absorption foam was also used as the first layer on the internal walls. It's also incredibly satisfyingly squidgy. Next, we built a raised floor of 4x2 timber and again filled it with the RS60 rock wall. The fully insulated floor was then covered with a 12mm layer of ply. Underneath the window, there's a raised area around 4x4 4 4 meters, which gives the space just a little bit more of a dynamic. Next, we put in an isolated ceiling using the brilliant Mute Clip and Mute Channel system. The Mute Clip is an isolated rubber like fixing which is drilled into the wall or ceiling. The Mute Channel is then attached to the Mute Clip, which is used as a surface to mount the isolated ceiling. I filled in the 450mm gap between the channels with a normal domestic rock wall. Two layers of acoustic grey plasterboard were then fixed to the Mute Channel as the final ceiling layer ready to be plastered. For the internal structure, we went for the tried and tested principle of a room within a room. It was super important that the stub work for this structure was attached to the isolated ceiling and not to the original walls. This was achieved by leaving a gap between the final mute channel and the external wall, which would then create a cavity of around 200mm to be insulated with rock wall. It was great to see that the studio would remain a large and open space with high ceilings. With the internal wall stub work and structure in place, the final layer of insulation went in. Similarly to the ceiling, the walls were then covered with two layers of acoustic grade plasterboard. A heavy duty, acoustically treated steel door about one meter across was installed at the entrance. This is Andy, the best plasterer in the southeast, and he managed to get the whole place done in about three days. Needless to say, the electrical installation for the studio was a big part of the build and happened at various stages throughout. One of the big appeals of building a studio was that I could end my difficult relationship with extension leads, and so each wall was fitted with around six to eight double sockets. Next, I embarked on the two-day paint job in a rather lovely set of overalls, and finally fitted an engineered oak floor with all the trimmings. For the best acoustics, conventional wisdom would say that building a studio without any parallel walls is the way to go. Unfortunately, I can only guarantee that I'll be here for three to five years at most, and I want to have a space that will be easily subletable to another person. So constructing a more normal shaped room and building separate floating acoustic treatment makes the most sense. In total, I built a mixture of around 20 gobos and panels, which would be attached to the ceiling, the walls, and also stand freely within the room. The final part of the build was to install two large double glazed windows with a 20 mil gap between for soundproofing. And after that, it was time to move in. To whomever is singing every day, shut up, you are loud.
and terrible. This, oh, not in focus. This is one of my favourite things that I have, and it's an actual note that got slid under my door whilst I was living in a guardianship. This is why I needed a studio and why I decided to make the investment. When I am recording, when I am rehearsing, when I'm writing, any creative period for me, knowing that no one is hearing what I'm doing is super important to me because it allows me to truly zone out and let the ideas flow in whatever way they need to. And I think some of my best ideas have come from those moments where I've almost been dribbling because I'm not really there. It's like hyper-focus kind of thing. And when I've been aware of people around me in domestic spaces recording, like bedroom recording, recording in your living room, whatever it is, I just can't get to that place. And I think it's super, super important. And I would just say that if you're a musician wondering about whether a studio space is worth it, if you're anything like me, I'd say 100% yes. Even if you can find like two hours a week, three hours a week to go and find a place where you can zone out in that way, do it. Because you never know what kind of ideas might come when you go into that more subconscious, um, free thinking space. So yeah, thanks for watching. And now for the big reveal, this is how the studio turned out. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it is. Hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>